Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, now, as you may have guessed from the intro music, the puzzle is focusing today on threes in the corners. Now, this is a bit of a one-off. Um, we do not encourage you in general to send us puzzles with loads and loads of rules, and especially not if the puzzle is not that difficult, and I'm told this isn't. So um, the reason for that is that basically for newer viewers to the channel, they're going to have to read all the rules and go, what the heck is going on? Why are these black dots, white dots, arrows, thermos, little killer clues, sandwich clues? What are they all doing? What are they contributing to the puzzle cages? Um, why do I have to learn how they all work? And then for older viewers to the channel who know how they all work, the puzzle isn't that challenging, apparently. Now, I might find it challenging, but that's what I'm told. But uh, So it's kind of the perfect bad mix. But this is a one-off. A lot of you who do follow the channel a lot will know what all the markings in the grid means without me having to explain. And um, will enjoy being able to, if it's true, surge through the puzzle. Um, and it does commemorate. That's three in the corner. One of the kind of catchphrases associated with the channel. Because any time we find three in the corner, if we remember, um, Simon will start humming, that's three in the corner, losing its religion. So we'll do that in a minute. Don't forget our links to Patreon, to Discord, to our merchandise, to the apps. They're all available under the description field. And uh, Sven Sadokupad as well. You can purchase our stuff. You can check out what's going on on Discord for free. There's loads going on all the time. And uh, we welcome any engagement. Do leave comments on the puzzle as well. I'll be very interested in the comments on this puzzle. And whether you actually like this style and want more of it or not so much. Anyway, I'm going to go through the rules now. So... Normal Sudoku rules apply. That's one to nine in every row, column, and box. A clue with an arrow outside the grid shows the total of the indicated diagonal. So those cells add up to 33. They can contain repeats. Um, a clue without an arrow outside the grid uh, shows the sum of the digits sandwiched between the one and the nine in that row or column. So in this row... Uh, 1 and 9 are placed somewhere, obviously, and the digits between them add up to 33. Digits along an arrow in the grid sum to the number in the attached circle. Now, it's a little difficult to see in the purple, but those two are on, a, on an arrow adding up to the number there. Those two are on, are on an arrow adding up to the number in the attached circle. Digits along a thermometer increase from the bulb to the tip. So that has to be lower than that, has to be lower than that. Cages show their sums and contain no repeat digits. So these six digits add up to 33. Actually, this cage doesn't show its sum, but the fact that it contains no repeat digits is probably important, as is the fact that it looks like a three, I've no doubt. Um, a black dot joins two cells with a one to two ratio, so you could have four and eight in those cells, for instance. A white dot joins two consecutive digits, so you could have one and two there. An X joins two digits that sum to ten, so those two sum up to ten. And a blue square shows an even digit. So a ton of rules to learn to do this puzzle. But on the other hand, if we can pick... Oh, the, the purple colouring is for no reason other than decoration to show another three in the corner. So there we go. That's what's going on in this puzzle. Do give it a try if you're happy with all those rules. And do let me know what you find about it in the in the comments. Thank you to JC for coming up with it. As I say, not a recommended format, but we're going to give it a go as a one-off. I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. So we can start with this little killer clue of three. That diagonal is only one cell long, so that is three in the corner right there. Hang on a second. I'll just get rid of Simon. And uh, I will carry on. So we've got three in the corner there. Now what's next? Well, that's on a black spot. So that goes with a six. That's on an X. So we get a four there. That's on a black spot. And it can't be a two. So that's an eight. And we've got a really good start already. 
what else can we do? We've got what? Where's where's best to look here? Um, hmm. Ah, look. There's a black dot that sees a four, and that is therefore either one, two, or three, six. Nothing else is possible at this stage. So its circle is either three or nine. We've got another black dot here. Ah, now this can't be one, two, or two, four, or four, eight. So that must be three, six, with nine in the circle. What else do we have going on? Um, I think the, the long little killer clues are too long to trouble us at the moment. Um, ah, this, yeah, this is an interesting combination. Oh, this is an even digit and it can't be six or four now. So that's two or eight. Now, why I was finding this an interesting combination is I know these two have to be the same parity. Once that's even, even plus even would be even, even plus odd would be odd. And these can't be even, or they'd have to be four and six, and that's that's not going to make the white dot down here work. In fact, the fact that, actually, this is simpler. The fact that these are consecutive means that is one away from that. So we must have a one in this cell. And now this can't be a two, because this can't be another three in the corner. We've already had a three in the corner on the right-hand side. So that's an eight. We get a nine there. So a lot of this stuff is really given away as long as you spot what, what to do next. Um, and I mean, I'm bound to come a cropper having just said that, but let's carry on. We've got eight, nine, one. So we've finished that. Three, eight, two, one, nine. This, ah, uh, yeah, this thermo with consecutive markers means that you're going one step up all the time and ending in four, five, six, or seven there. But it can't be seven or five because this cell can't be six or four. So it's six or four there, five or three there, four or two here. What else does that give us? Not much at the moment. Oh, these the sandwich clues. These are vital. Gosh. Right. The one to nine in a Sudoku, you may know the secret, always is the total of any row or column or box, and it is 45. Now, if we take the nine and one, the crusts of the sandwich out, and I know they're going to be here, that leaves 35, which is the maximum number of digits that can be sound, maximum total of digits that can be sandwiched between nine and one. So if there's a two outside that already that's not in the sandwich, then all the other digits must be. So we're going to put a one here. And in this row, Ah, oh, yeah, we've got, we've got to have three outside the sandwich because the maximum sandwich is 35. We've got the nine there. Three that can't use a one can only be done in one cell. So that's another three in the corner. That could actually have been my second digit in. And the first two digits could have been two threes in the corner, which is the max. So anyway, we've dealt with those two sandwich clues now. However we put in the rest of the digits, they must work. Um... Ah, and this now can't use a 1 or a 3. So it does use a 4, which is interesting. Oh, in fact, it uses a 2 and a 4. It can't use an 8. Okay, and so here's the simple way. I, I know there's a 4 on this thermo, but what I'm going to do instead is see that those are a 2-4 pair. So that's a 6, 5, 4 on the consecutive cells, 2, 4. And we are absolutely flying along now. Now, in this 33 cage, we've got 22 already, so those two add up to 11. They can't be 4, 7, or 8, 3. They can't be 5, 6, or you'd have too many 5, 6s and 7s in those cells. So it's a 2, 9 pair. This is a 3, 7 pair because it's all that's left in the box. Um, this is 5 or 6, therefore. In fact, 1 and three have to be a pair here because they're in those cells and they can't appear anywhere here. Now we've got two, seven, and nine on these cells, but seven and nine can never be on a black dot because they don't have a one to two ratio partner amongst the Sudoku digits. So we get four or, well, this has to be a four now because it can't be a one. 49, three, one, seven. These are from five, six, and eight. Those can't be two. Two is consecutive to 
1 or 3, but it can't be 1. 3 is consecutive to 4 or 2, but it can't be 4. Now, in this cage, we've already got 19 definitely in those four cells. These two have to add up to 14 without containing another 9, because we can't have repeats in a cage, so they're an 8-6 pair in those two remaining cells. Um, this now can't be a 1-2 pair, so it's a 3-6 pair. We get 9 in its circle. Can we do this circle? No. Let's have a look at this black dot. 1 and 3 can't be on it, so it has to be either 2-4 or 4-8. So there's a 4 here, and in fact this must be a 2. It couldn't have been 4-8. 2, 4, 3, 6. So, now let's use the secret again in this box. We've got 45 as the total of the box, but 33 in those cells. So these others have to add up to 12. Take out the 4. These two have to add up to 8. They clearly can't be 2, 6 or 3, 5 because of these. So they're a 1 and a 7, and we can actually place them thanks to this 1. That fixes 9, 7 down here. This is where 5 goes in the first column. This is part of a 678 triple in this box. So add on the 1 and we get 7 or 9. No, actually we can't have 7 or 8, so we do get a 9 there. 8 on the arrow. That fixes all of boxes 4 and 7. Yeah, that becomes a 6. So we can finish this I wing in column 3. That's an 8. Uh, the cage total works, that's good. And I mean, there are just so many clues here. You can almost, you certainly don't have to do it in the order I'm doing it. I think there are lots of ways of firing through this puzzle. Now, we got the cages with the least markings still to go. And that's unsurprising at this point. Let's see. Oh, that 5-7 pair has given us a 6 here. That fixes the 3-6 black dot. I mean, everything comes just given to you once you once you find something you can do so two in this box is here this is ordinary sudoku for once then we get a one in one of those cells a one in one of those six one nine um, these are from four five and seven and i don't know anything about them let's have a look at this thermo the end of it can't be nine eight or four so it is 5, 6, or 7. It couldn't be 3, because that would have to be a 2 on the thermo, and that's not possible. So you've got 5, 6, or 7 there, then this can't be 5, 8, or 9, or 3. So let's... no, we can't go up to 6, because we couldn't step up to the 7 there. So 1, 2, or 4 there. This one now must be... 3, 5, or 6, because it can't be 1, 2, or 4. And actually, I don't think that was probably the next place to go, because I didn't really learn much there. Um, these can't be a 7 anymore. That's a 5, 8 pair. Ah, that is quite interesting from one point of view. There is, the 5s form an X-wing here in columns 4 and 5. They must be in these cells. There must be two 5s. That's going to use up the fives for these columns. So these cells can't have a five in anymore. And they've, their possibilities have got reduced. And that's given us a three, six pair in row three. So three, six, four, one, two, eight in row three has to be there. The others are five, seven, and nine. And the last one can't be a nine. Now, actually, let's have a look at this. Yes, we've got loads of digits now on this little killer. So if we add up the ones we've got, they add up to 28. The other two must add up to 5. Let me just check my maths. Yes, that's right. These two must add up to 5, and it can't be 3 there and 2 there, because that would clash with this. So it's 1 there. Oops, I'm in the wrong mode. 1 there and 4 there. This becomes a 3. Ah, that's fixed two cells on the thermo. Finished box 1. Uh, doesn't resolve this cell. Does it? Ah, oh, this 5, 7 is done. That does the 8, 5 pair. And then we've got 1, 2, and 9 left in column 4 to do. Now we need a 6 in box 5. Now let's have a look at this cage, which mustn't contain any repeat digits. 
We've already used four, five, six, seven in it. Um, oh, I'm not sure that gives me... Yes, this is naked, therefore. It also sees two, nine, eight, and one. So it must be a three. Um, we've got either eight or nine there. I'm just going to fill in the possibilities. This is also either eight or nine. Nothing else it can be given the digits it can see. And that's a pair in the column, so we can put in two and nine there. That's now not a nine. This one's not resolved because it's only an eight cell cage. It doesn't have all the digits, and that could be either one or two. Now we've got a one and five pair to put in there. Um, this has to be where four goes in column five. This is also one or nine. I don't quite know how that sorts itself out. Maybe it's time to look at the other little killer clues. So this one, yes, we've got loads of it. So 10, 16, 21 done already. So these two have to add up to 12. And that means we can't have an eight here because that can't be a four. So nine there, three there. And maybe we'll even try and knock off this one at the same time. 10, 19, 22, 26. These two have to add up to 7, so that can't possibly be 7 or 9. And I think we must be pretty much done now. So let's see if we can finish off the puzzle at this point. 7 and 4. And really, it didn't hold, it didn't hold us up much. And, uh, I mean, it was quite fun, I will admit. But again, that's with the proviso that if you know what all the rules mean, you can kind of skate through it a bit. And there we go. That finishes threes in the corners with appropriately threes in the corners. And uh, that was quite good fun. Thank you very much for watching, as always. As I say, it's probably a one-off, but let me know what you thought in the comments. Always interested. And I will see you later. Bye.